just to re-emphasize folks the all-important point we whites are victimized there's nothing wrong with any race on planet earth it's not about how whites feel about non-whites blah 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 there is only one issue is how whites are treated whites are treated badly whites are mistreated whites are harmed erased very apparently whites are victimized there's no problem with how non-whites are treated they're treated fine they're treated better than fine most of the time there there's only one issue the issue lies solely with how whites are treated not how whites treat anyone else there's no issue there definitely not the only issue is how whites are treated by everyone <laughs> by anti-whites of all kinds we know that anti-whites can come in just about every variety including white anti-whites sadly so <laughs> how whites are treated mistreated by everyone including fellow whites is the issue that is the only issue that is where the issue lies everything else is you know okay non-whites are treated better than fine one issue how whites are treated whites are mistreated and treated very badly as we all know and of course whites whites are constantly attacked uh, mainly via via white guilt and this is a mechanism that makes a white attack themselves this is <laughs> this is how most whites have been trained to attack and harm themselves is through white guilt so this the mistreatment of whites includes how whites treat their own person their own individual selves most whites feel guilty feel bad about themselves don't treat their themselves very well as individuals this is wrong too mistreatment of yourself as a white is anti-white pathogenic and not right that's part of the problem as well it all goes into the mistreatment of whites that is the only problem that is our only focus and that is our basically our stance folks it's not about anything else it's not about any of the distractions that the anti-whites put out their diversity not and on and on and on there's so many distractions out there it's crazy and they do that on purpose to keep whites mainly distracted from the real issue which is that whites get treated like crap the only race <laughs> and that's encouraged in society so our stance folks is single-minded single-edged we have one focus and basically one one stance is that white whites are mistreated that's it whites are 
hated, attacked, obviously treated very horribly. Whites are victimized. That's our issue. Why are whites being attacked, harmed any race so much? What's, what's the deal there? That is our stance. That needs to stop. The aggression toward whites from anti-whites needs to stop. The victimization of Western kind needs to stop. That's it, folks. That's our only stance. And as a side note, so you, again, you always come back to that. Yeah, but whites are victimized. Why are whites being victimized? Why are whites the only ones treated badly? You know, why is that considered okay in society for whites to be constantly victimized and mistreated? That is your stance. That is our stance, folks. None of the other stuff matters. We all get the idea. And as a side note, finish up <laughs> man folks it's the the insanity is just really it's almost entertaining if it wasn't so sad and arduous to go through but <clears throat> the 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 lengths and the lows the anti-whites are going to is almost comical. Um, and just one example is I noticed on uh, college football semifinals, playoffs, if anyone's watched that, Michigan, TCU, Georgia, and Ohio State. Sadly, Michigan lost. Oh, well. <laughs> but anyway... Um, I noticed up up in that football stadium. I could not believe my eyes. And <laughs> was the phrase Jesus was a refugee. And I noticed and there's a bunch of commercials on big campaigns now that I'm on the road again. Um in North Florida at the moment heading out of here. But there's a big campaign now. A lot of you probably noticed this about Jesus and they're just totally using it for anti-whiteism 100%. They're making Jesus into some kind of anti-white figure. It's just, you almost, you really have to laugh at this point. And I've seen a bunch of commercials. These are brand new and billboards actually. Billboards in Florida. Uh, one passing through, um, somewhere up here in the north part, uh, Jacksonville, I think, said Jesus was a refugee. <laughs> and there's commercials, there, there's a huge campaign now, the, the, the mainstream anti-white media has launched about Jesus, and it's all anti-white. <laughs> Seeing all these Jesus messages everywhere now. And it's just insane. That's that's the the main one is Jesus was a refugee. That's their campaign now. You know, hey, they're trying to support those non-whites, supposedly refugees, invaders, and saying, hey, Jesus was a refugee. I mean, again, big, you know, long commercials. I mean, there was a commercial, the commercial they show is with these non-white Latinos of some variety, and it explains this story. Uh, there was once a story of these, this happy family, blah, blah, blah. And then there was political turmoil, blah, 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 and they left, and they were tired, hungry, blah, blah, blah. And they say that was, <laughs> and they're showing all these, these Latinos in the whole commercial. And then at the end they say, that was Joseph and Mary fleeing Bethlehem <laughs> uh, with the baby Jesus or whatever, you could assume, I guess. 
<laughs> so, I mean, obviously, they're just, they're showing all these um, footage of Latinos. They're not, <laughs> it's obviously not realist, you know. And then the point there is they're showing non-whites. Uh, it doesn't matter really what variety. But <laughs> just the classic images. And... You know, so obviously they're not really talking about Jesus or Joseph and Mary or anything biblical. They're just superimposing that on modern day um, non-white invasion, white erasure replacement. So it's just it's just unbelievable the lengths they're going to now. And at the end of that commercial, it says Jesus was a refugee. He gets us. Well, so who's us? Us is obviously non-whites. So again, they're really, really making their grab saying, whites, this country does not belong to you. Uh, it's, it's, it's ours as non-whites. That's what they're saying. <laughs> this country, America, is completely non-white. It's non-white owned. It's comprised mainly of non-white people. Uh, it can't get any clearer. <laughs> um, you know, when you see big mainstream ads supporting these so-called refugees, these non-whites, invaders, that, that means that the institution, the establishment at large is on their side is probably mostly non-white themselves and they're definitely anti-white <laughs> we we own pretty much nothing about this country and that that is very very clear now jesus was a refugee is the lengths they're going to big big campaign now overnight big tv ads billboards etc unbelievable and I, the kicker was I saw that actually just on some kind of electronic, you know, display on the college football, one of the semifinal playoff playoffs uh, just the other day. They actually just put it out there. Jesus was a refugee. <laughs> um, or, you know, or something like that. So, I mean, they are going gangbusters with that message. Uh, just insanity. Um, and they have just some other varieties of this. This whole organization, whatever that's funding this. They have another, some different other messages about Jesus. You know... He, he disagreed with loved ones, but he didn't disown them or whatever. I mean, there's just these different messages, a few of them I've seen. They're all anti-white. They're all showing non-whites. So this is a big push, folks. A big push from the mainstream anti-white media to use Jesus, specifically to use Christianity <laughs> as an anti-white force now, as an explicit major anti-white force now really stepping it up to use Christianity and specifically Jesus as an anti-white tool to really turn that whole religion Jesus himself the central figure <laughs> to try to even turn him against whites to try to somehow make him into some kind of anti-white I mean the lengths again are just ridiculous um, but that shows that we cannot rely on Christianity uh, to save us so I mean that much makes it very clear as time goes on things unfold things are revealed more and more and it should be totally obvious now. They want whites to just keep on that Christian path. Christianity is the answer, you know? 
and they'll they'll turn Christianity and morph that into anything they want. Jesus himself, they're trying to morph him in, into an anti-white. They will use anything and everything for anti-whiteism. Uh, I am a Christian. It's a nice tool. It's a good religion if it's practiced in the right way. But any religion can be turned and morphed into anything. I mean, Jesus was definitely not anti-white. <laughs> uh, you know, if anything, he was anti anti-white, <laughs> especially of the hat variety. But. Um, you know, they can they can morph it into whatever they want. People can say whatever they want about a religion and essentially make it into whatever they want. Practice it however they want. The church in America is basically, you know, they, they call it Christian churches, but in my opinion, they're basically satanic. And they're very anti-white. I went to a service on Christmas Eve uh, with some relatives in Florida. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. It was all about Jesus being a Jew and how much they were doing for non-whites and mission, so-called mission work and blah, blah, blah. I mean, it was nauseating, folks. It's, it's, the church is extremely talking about diversity this, diversity that. Let's all get together and get along. Blah, 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 blah. Extremely to the max anti-white. Unpalatably anti-white. That's the church. So, you know, if you if it's if religion is practiced in the right way, in a good way, then then it's good. It can be very good. It can be used for good. It can be very useful. It can be a very good tool. Um, any religion can be used for good or bad, I think. Christianity is no different. So, I'm a Christian. A lot of us here, I think, are. And practice it in good ways. Take the good things from it. You know, that's the imprint of Western kind on Christianity. Making it a good thing. Guiding morality... Grace, mercy, forgiveness, love your neighbor, etc. Right, righteousness, though. You know, this is the Western imprint, mostly, I think, in my opinion. So, the anti white imprint, they're going to say, obviously, all these anti white things, including now the kicker that Jesus was anti white. <laughs> I mean, it's just, it's unreal. So, again, Nothing wrong with Christianity inherently. Again, I'm a Christian, can practice it in good ways. It's all about how you practice it. It's all about how it's framed. Um, that's the, the key. It cannot be just taken any which way it's framed from the anti-whites, for example. You can't just believe anything anyone says about a religion People can say anything they want about a religion. They have turned it literally upside down. In America, for example. Um, they can put Christ on the... on the name... plate outside the church or whatever, but it has nothing to do with Christ. <laughs> uh, for example. So we all get the idea with that. Um, I think religion is good has to be practiced in the right way, but it cannot be relied upon to save us because that is not the issue. That is not the battle that we're in. We're not in a religious battle. It's not really the issue. It's just completely separate. Uh, there have been plenty of religious battles in history. This is not one of those. This is clearly a racial battle, which happened as well. So that is the thing, this, our salvation as we all know, white well-being, white positivity, going free from the anti-white narrative, going free from white guilt. No white guilt is going to save our butts. No white, no white guilt. That is the phrase that sets us free. 
Um, and I also noticed down in South Florida, oh my gosh, like I said, the tensions were high. Everywhere I turned, there was crime, there was accidents. People were pissed at each other all the time. People were always grouchy and rude. Unbelievable. I, I even, on my way out, I actually read a, a homeowners association letter just by chance at the place where I was staying, renting a room. And the, the letter from the president said, man, there's been a lot of strife this year in this community. It's been so contentious. <laughs> I mean, and I just had to laugh and say, yep, that's because of multiracialism. This is what happens when multiracialism starts coming to a head. Tensions start getting hot. Strife really builds. And those contentions just arise more and more. And people just fight <laughs> more and more. And little fights turn into big fights. And I'm just thinking, that's, that's what happens. That's what we get. That's what you get. Whoever gets that wants to support this, that's what you get if you think you can kumbaya with multiracialism. You're just going to get a whole bunch of fighting, chaos, and misery. That's what it leads to. So I'm thinking, yep, here's, here's the fruits. People are starting to see it. Most people probably can't name exactly what the reason is. They probably know it deep down. Most people, just like in this letter, will say, hey, this letter said, let's put our differences aside. Hopefully we can put our differences aside and get along. And of course, there's a lot of non-whites in South Florida, more than I ever remember as a kid. I mean, they've been there for a long time, since before I was a kid, but obviously the numbers have really ramped up everywhere. Really, really ramped up. So, I mean, in all these communities, there was just non-whites, non-white. It didn't matter even if it was a nice community or not, you know. They're all over the grungy neighborhoods, but they're all over the really nice neighborhoods now, too. I mean, all over. I don't think, I went, they have all these gated communities in Florida. I was doing DoorDash deliveries. I don't think I saw a single security guard that was not black all the security guards are black every single one of them in all those gated communities doesn't matter how nice they are or average they are and then inside non-whites live in there with latino music and other kinds of non-white music playing everywhere etc etc we all know the deal so you know it's just that's what happens with multiracialism put a whole bunch of races together there's gonna be issues of all kinds we are the only ones as Western kind that are the victims everyone else is just looting us with uh, looting us unashamedly and then their only gripe is that they're not getting enough they want more than their fellow looter that's the only reason they get into issues most of the time. Crime is through the roof. Danger everywhere. No law and order. So this is multiracialism, folks, as we all know. And the, the mainstream folk are starting to get the idea, I think. I mean, when you have a homeowners association president saying, man, I don't know what is going on here, but he was resigning. And he wrote in this letter and said, <laughs> this is the worst year I've ever had in like 29 years. A lot of contentions in the community. He said, it was just to put that in an official letter and say, I don't know what's going on here, but this has been the worst ever. <laughs> That's something right there. And I said, yes, absolutely right. It's not just me feeling this and noticing this. 
Now, the appropriate response to verbalize would be that this is a result of multiracialism. This is a result of the attack and on Western kind, the victimization of Western kind. That would be the appropriate response. Things are so bad, contentions are so high because of multiracialism. Why is multiracialism here? To harm and erase Western kind, to victimize Western kind, that's it. Stop the victimization of Western kind and most all those problems go away. Contentions go away. Because all those problems arise because of the anti-white efforts, the anti-white agenda. Take away the anti-white agenda, there's no need for multiracialism, there's no need for feminism or any other form of anti-whiteism. All of these little side problems that may not seem to be related to anti-whiteism are caused by anti-whiteism. All these things will go away if anti-whiteism goes away. Anti-whiteism, of course, will not go away on its own. It needs to be defeated thanks to the work of people like us. But that would be the appropriate response. Contentions are so high. Well, what I would say to that president of that homeowners association, well, that's because of multiracialism, sir. I am sure you know this. <laughs> and multiracialism is directly because of anti-whiteism. Anti-whiteism is the root problem every time. That's the point. Why are contentions high in neighborhoods all over the place? Because of anti-whiteism. Now a lot of people will still say, hey, they're trained to always want everyone to get along. I think that's the virtuous thing. The more different types of people they can get together in the same place, living in the same areas, the better they think that is. And they're always pushing for that. Let's just try to put our differences aside and get along. And that was what he said in this letter. Hopefully we just put our differences aside and get along. We all know what that means. Um, <laughs> always trying to keep forcing this multiracialism to work and it'll just get worse and worse. So, you know, whether he actually meant that or not, is unknown to me but the appropriate response is not let's just put our differences aside and keep pushing it pushing the multiracialism more no the more it's pushed the worse it will get it's going down a dead-end trail further and further differences cannot be put aside those differences will just get magnified more and more the closer different races live in proximity to each other. You know? Uh, people are meant to have a comfortable distance between each other. They can love each other at a distance. And with racial groups, that is a very true rule. <laughs> there needs to be a very healthy distance to have you know, uh, a love and respect for those people, we could say. Can love foreigners at a distance, then everything's fine. Everyone has their home, then different groups of people can, ex can be friendly. They can visit each other, then go back home. That's, that's how <laughs> friendly relations work, as we all know. You start forcing them to live together, well, what happens? That friend, maybe it's a good friend, but if you're a housemate with them or a roommate, you don't get along so well because your habits don't jive together. We all know how that works. Same deal. Okay, maybe you like non-whites, blah, blah, blah. Maybe non-whites like whites, whatever way. Start living together, issues come up. 
We all know the deal. Everyone needs to have their homelands. White Westerners are the only ones who don't. So I'll cut myself off here on this rambling video. And lastly mention, um, in addition to the point about Jesus being a refugee, being a massive ad campaign now, guess who they call refugees, folks? Just focusing on that refugee word. And this is something a lot of us probably are aware of already. But I was listening to the radio the other day, and they're still got this thing about Ukraine going on, helping Ukraine. Still pushing that constantly, as most of us know. Um... And what, what are they calling the, the Ukrainians? They're calling them refugees. These, you know, people over there or whatever. That's what's on the radio, on media. They're saying, hey, got to keep helping those Ukrainian refugees. Big refugee crisis now over in Ukraine. So, what does that tell us about Ukraine? Confirms what I've said, which a lot of us probably know. You Ukrainians folks, they're not our people. Do not ever think a Ukrainian is your brother or sister as a Westerner. You will be sadly mistaken, I guarantee you. I've, I've had experience with this. <laughs> so it's no surprise to me, the mainstream anti-white media is on their side. Saying, hey, they're refugees just like all those other non-whites. They're being used in the same way for Western kind replacement. Even though they have white appearing skin, they're not our people, folks. They're calling them refugees. That should tell you everything that you need to know. Um, very, very, very significant anti-white population over there just in general um and then just the final thing is it looks like they're pushing world war three on that it just seems like they just keep pushing and pushing so we'll see looks like that's what they have up their sleeve um we'll see how it goes i wouldn't be surprised at all uh if they launch off of world war three and you can bet the main agenda, just like the previous two world wars, will be white erasure. Um, which won't happen as long as we're around. I love y'all. God bless each and every one. Stay strong. White positive. White free. White protective. White proud. White resilient. White defined. And white pure.